The Prince and the Pauper by Mark Twain. Chapter 19. The Prince and the Hermit. He never looked back until he came to the forest. Then he turned and saw two figures far away from him. He hurried on. After a long walk he stopped to have a rest. At first he was going to stay the whole day where he was. But as it was cold he decided to go straight through the forest in the hope to find some road. He went on and on and soon he saw that the night was coming on. He became frightened and the fear made him hurry faster. And how glad he was when he saw some faint light not far away. He started towards that light which came from a window of a little hut. He came up to that window and looked through it. The room was small. In a corner was a poor bed and ragged blankets on it. Near it was short bench and a chair. On the bench there were some dishes. There was no table in the hut, but in the middle of the room there was a big wooden box with an open book on it. An old man was standing on his knees and praying. He was big and thin. His long hair was as white as snow. A holy hermit, said the king to himself. All will be well now. The hermit rose from his knees. The king knocked at the door. A voice answered, Enter. The king entered and stopped. The hermit looked at him and said, Who are you? I am the king, came the answer. Welcome, king, cried the hermit. Welcome, welcome. A king who throws his crown away and wears rags. A king who wants to spend his days in peace, he is welcome. He may stay here till his death comes. The king tried to stop him and explain everything. But the hermit paid no attention to him, he did not even hear him. He went on and on with his talk, and raised and raised his voice. Yes, you will be at peace here. You will pray and whip your body every day, you will eat bread and drink water only. You will wear a hair shirt on your body, and you will be at peace. Nobody will find you here. Nobody will trouble you. The king began to tell him his story, but the hermit went on speaking and walking up and down the floor. Then he came up to the king and whispered, Shish! I will tell you a secret. After a moment or two he went to the window, put his head out and looked around. Then he came back again, put his face close to the king's and whispered. I am an archangel. The king became frightened. He thought, why did I not stay with the tramps? To stay with them was much better than to be the prisoner of a madman. The hermit continued. I was made an archangel five years ago by angels who were sent to me here to tell me this great news. They dropped upon their knees to me. To me, king. Because I was greater than they. He stopped for a moment and then went on with his mad speech. Yes. I am an archangel. Only an archangel. Twenty years ago a voice said to me in a dream. You will be Pope. At that time I was a monk. But the king put an end to our life at the monastery and drove us away. That is why I am not Pope, but only an archangel. So he went on for an hour. While the poor little king sat and suffered. Then the old man stopped speaking and gave the king some food to eat. After their supper the hermit put the boy to bed. Edward felt happy to lie down. He was terribly tired. The old man left him and sat down by the fire. Suddenly he got up and went up to the king. He said, So you are the king, are you not? 
Yes, said the boy who was half asleep already, what king? Of England. Of England? Then Henry is dead? Alas. It is so. I am his son. Do you know that it was your father who turned us out of our monastery and made us houseless and homeless? There was no answer. The boy was asleep. He sleeps. So, his heart is happy, the hermit said and turned away. The old man began walking around the hut. He was looking for something. He found it at last. It was a big old knife. He sat down at the fire and began to look at the knife. He was looking at the knife and talking aloud at the same time. It was his father that did it all, he said. He had turned us out and made us homeless. And I am not Pope, but only an archangel because of Henry VIII. The hermit came to the sleeping boy. He raised his hand with the knife in it. Then he thought, it is long past midnight. I don't want him to cry out. Somebody may pass and hear him. It will be bad for me, very bad. He found some rags and came up to the sleeping king with them. Very carefully and slowly he tried his legs together, then he tied his hands. And then carefully and slowly the archangel covered the boy's mouth with another rag and tied it over his head.